Hey guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge. In today's Let's Code, I'll be turning minecarts into the deadly hunks of iron they were meant to be. I'll be using Minecraft commands inside of a data pack to create this. And as always, this is not meant to be a tutorial, nor am I claiming that this creation is the best or only way to get this done. This creation I would estimate to be about intermediate level, but no matter how good you are with commands, I hope you enjoy the video. Without further ado, let's get started. As always, I'm starting with a looping and load function. Check out a how to create a data pack video if you don't know what those are. To start off, we want to create a function that runs on all minecarts that are near a crashable entity. And to make sure it's a crashable entity, I'm going to be using an entity tag, which if you don't know is basically a group of entities. This is different from NBT tags. I will be using this to make sure that we only run the command if the minecart is actually close to an entity that could be damaged by the cart. And just for the sake of example, we're going to use a radius of 10 for now, just so it's easier to test. To implement the entity tags, I first made a tags folder inside of the namespace and an entity types folder inside of that, and then the file inside of that. The entity tag file is a very basic JSON file, so if you want to know how I know this is the syntax, it's because I opened up Minecraft's default entity tag folders and copy pasted it from there. It's basically just a simple list of all the entities you want to group together, and with them all grouped together into a single entity tag, it's a lot easier to detect for all of them at once. And just to quickly double check and show that it's working, I'll go in game and use an execute say command. We'll be taking the speed of the minecart to determine if it's going fast enough to deal damage, so I need to create some scoreboards to hold that data. I did scoreboard objectives add KC, which stands for kill cart, and I made it type dummy to make sure that it's manipulated by commands. I made scoreboards for the speed values of X, Y, and Z, and the sum which will be used as the overall speed. Now let's start making the file that we put in our first execute command. I usually start by writing down the context that the function is called from so I don't have to go back and check later. Then I'll start with recording down the current motion of the minecart. The way we'll do that is with an execute store command. If you're unfamiliar, this powerful command lets me take data from one place and store it into another. In this case, I'm storing the result of a data get command into the scoreboard of the current entity, which is the minecart. So the data get command is pulling the motion data of the current entity, the minecart. So the final effect of the command is putting the cart's motion into the scoreboard we made. The 1000 indicates that the value will be multiplied by 1000 to make sure it's not a decimal since scoreboards only hold integers. Then of course I duplicated the command for all three axes of motion. Back inside of Minecraft, after reloading the pack, I'm displaying the xmotion scoreboard that we made and pushing a minecart to show you that the xmotion is in fact being recorded. Same thing goes for the zmotion. To make sure all of the values can be measured properly to see if the cart's going fast enough, I want to make sure they're all positive by multiplying them by negative 1, if they're less than 0. I'm doing this with a scoreboard operation command, making sure to only execute if the current entity's score is negative, and then multiplying it by negative 1. Since you can't straight up use a number with the operation command, I'll store the negative 1 value inside of a fake player called .neg1. And it doesn't matter which scoreboard I use, but I'm just using the sum scoreboard. And as you can see, I'm just initializing that score inside of our load function. Then of course, I'm just duplicating it for x, y, and z. Then to get our total sum, I'm just adding all of them up individually with their own commands, with scoreboard operation as normal. What I was thinking is that since the cart is moving one direction at a time, if I just add the sizes of the speeds in all directions together, then I'll get the total speed in whatever direction the cart happens to be moving in at that given time. You'll see in a bit why this doesn't actually work properly and I'll end up changing methods. Now that the sum value should properly reflect the speed of the minecart, or at least so I thought at the time, I could now detect if it's going fast enough to cause damage. For now I'm just going to do a test with a say command just so it's easy for me to see if it's working or not. Then I added a command to reset the sum scoreboard every single time to make sure that it started from zero. As you can see, it appears to be working fine because the cart goes over the rails, it gains speed, and it plays the kill messages. Then once it starts slowing down, it stops playing the kill messages. So it looked like it was working, but I wanted to check the actual speed. I couldn't just display the scoreboard since it was being reset constantly, so I used a telraw command instead. I went to mcstacker.net to make a telraw that output the score of the current entity's sum scoreboard. And I took that and pasted it into the cart function right before the sum scoreboard reset. I also commented out the say command so it wouldn't clutter up the chat. Now when I push the cart around the track, it prints its current motion sum into the chat. 
Now you should be able to see the issue. The speed should be declining once it leaves the powered rails, but as you can see, it spikes in two spots. That's because at the corners, it doesn't actually switch immediately from x-axis to z-axis, so it actually does travel diagonally for a bit, which I probably should have noticed. This meant that at the diagonals, it would appear to be traveling faster since I was just adding the values of the vectors instead of using the distance formula. I decided that I should actually fix this by using the distance formula, but this requires the use of square root, so I'll get a pack for that. The first one I found was from NopeName, so make sure you guys go check out his channel, he makes some pretty useful data packs. After downloading it, I unzipped it and put it into my own data pack. I decided to take the functions out of his namespace folder and put it into my own just because it was called math and I don't want people downloading the folder to have some namespace issues, so I thought it would be easier just to put it inside of my own. Then I had to make sure to run his setup function from inside of my own load function. And the last thing I'm going to do before using it is to make sure to change the file path since I moved the files. Now I have to actually implement the distance formula calculation. The first part is squaring all of the motion values by using a multiplication scoreboard operation, which was pretty simple. Then I implemented nope name square root functionality, which I saw by watching his video, which first requires me to set the input value into the fake player called in at his scoreboard called math square root. Then I have to run his execution function to actually run the calculation, which will then output the value into the fake player called out, which is in the same scoreboard. Then I deleted the old tellraw command and then replaced the detection from the kill cart motion sum to the output of the square root function. And then the last thing is just to make sure to reset that square root output value. Oh, and also a new tellraw to print out the new scoreboard. If you're still a bit confused, here's a rundown of the whole process. In the bottom right is the distance formula, but instead of distances between two points, I'm using the motion data from the cart. First I need to square the x, y, and z motion. Then I add all of those into our sum variable. After that, I could input our sum into the fake player called in, which is used in nope names pack. Finally, I run his execution function, which gets the square root of the input and puts it into the out, where it is detected. Now when I test it, you'll see that the Telraw shows that the speed is being properly measured, and it doesn't have the speed spikes that the other method had. It constantly decreases after the powered rails. It's a small effect, but I wanted to make sure to do it right. Now I want to implement the damage system, which I'm going to use a slime for. Why a slime you ask? Well slimes actually have a special property of doing damage to the player as soon as they come into contact. This differs from other mobs, like a zombie, which has to wait a bit before being able to attack. That means I could summon an invisible slime just as the cart contacts a player to instantly do damage. Also, it lets me have custom death messages by naming the slime, custom damage by changing the attack damage attribute, and it also does knockback, unlike some other damage methods like instant harming. I went to mcstacker.net and made a slime that was invulnerable and silent. I set the size to 1, which is the medium slime, named it a fast minecart so when a player died it would say he got killed by a fast minecart, made it invisible, then I set its damage to 10, which is 5 hearts. Then I copied it over from mcstacker to replace my say command so that it would summon instead of running the say kill command. I also added a detection for nearby players, since the slime is only going to be used for hurting players. I went back in game and started testing it, and it looked like it was working just fine. But of course there was still an issue, because the slime was still there, because I didn't kill it off. The first idea for a solution I had was to first of all tag the slime so I could identify it with my other commands, and then put a kill command before the slime would have spawned in. That means the slime shouldn't be killed until the command ran again the next tick. But as you can see, when I actually tested it, the slime was no longer doing damage. So I needed to have a delay before the slime was killed off, but I didn't want to manually create some sort of delay with scoreboards, so I was trying to see if maybe there was an age NBT which I could just detect when it rose, but instead I found the air NBT which increases up to 300 if the mob is in air. So the only issue I thought of is that it wouldn't work underwater. But after testing the carts in the water, in 1.17 by the way, it looked like it wouldn't matter since they couldn't move fast enough there anyways. So I decided to go with it and I set the air to 260 which seems to work fine because assuming the 300s works in ticks, that would be a 2 second delay until the slime would be killed off. Speaking of which, I made sure the slime had 300 air before dying, and I also changed the kill command to a teleport command to make sure it doesn't die visibly and leave particles and stuff like that. But when I went to test it, the slime was dying in the minecart, so I had to fix that. 
The reason this was happening is that the slime would be summoned onto the minecart's position and since it was moving and it didn't have a passenger already, it picked up the invisible slime who then rode into the minecart. And when an entity is riding another entity, the passenger entity can't be teleported away. You have to teleport the root entity, which in this case would be the minecart. So I wanted to make sure the slime couldn't actually get into the cart. The first solution I thought of was to summon an area effects cloud that the slime would ride since those can't top into minecarts. I gave it the same tag as a slime, set its duration to 50, and added a slime passenger. Back in the cart function, I replaced our old summon command with the new one and then copied over the slime data. Since we're now using an area effect cloud, I could remove everything that had the air attribute since the area effect cloud has the age attribute. Also, I don't know why I put an age of 49 here, but just pretend it says 1. Now you can tell it's actually working properly. It does damage when it's going fast and it also cleans itself up without leaving slime everywhere. Something else I wanted to add is different values of damage depending on how fast the cart's going. So what I did was I duplicated my summon command that I currently have and added different ranges of speeds to detect for. Then I changed some of the damage values. I also shrunk the test radius at this time. Now one issue that we do have still is that the player riding the minecart could actually take damage and the reason that happens is we're trying to execute on any nearby players in order to summon the slime, but the player riding the minecart counts as a nearby player. But this is pretty easy to fix. If I use a data get command you'll see that you could actually see when the player is riding a vehicle, so all we have to do is make sure not to enable the slime when the player is riding. We could detect that with an NBT detection inside of the target selector, but instead of normally typing out with the brackets after the equal sign, we put an exclamation mark right before the brackets that holds the data to indicate we don't want that data in the entity. As you can see, I no longer take any damage while going quickly inside of the minecart, but as soon as I step out of it and let it run over me, I do take damage. Now something I do want to fix is you can see the slime actually appear for like a split second as soon as the minecart comes into contact with you and I want to make sure it's completely invisible. The reason it's not invisible even though we gave it invisibility is that the invisibility has to take a tick or two in order to actually apply. To fix this issue, I'm going to first summon the slime super high in the sky to give it like a tick to turn invisible and then once it is invisible, I'm going to teleport it down to the player and then teleport it away afterwards. Since the slimes are constantly being summoned and removed from the cart's location anyways, the small one tick delay shouldn't really matter. I first changed the summon commands to summon 320 blocks in the air. Then I copied the teleport command from the main function, but changed it to teleport 320 blocks down. Lastly, I changed the mains removal command to work at an age of 2, so it would only remove the slime after it hit the player. I also quickly added a new entity tag to make this damage system work with all minecart types. I was also going to make this do damage to mobs and stuff like that, which is why I had that entity tag at the beginning of the video, but I decided that I wasn't actually going to add that in. If you want to though, you could of course download this and implement your own system for doing that by maybe using a health scoreboard or just using instant damage and healing. And back in game when I test it, you could see that those simple changes fixed it so we no longer see the slime flash in front of us as soon as we take damage. And that's basically it, so if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer.